Hello and welcome to Machine Learning for Biomedical Data, an introductory course to applied high-throughput data analysis. This course is brought to you by the Georgetown Medical Center in collaboration with Pine Biotech, a company specializing in big biomedical data analysis. The course materials were prepared by our team from Pine Biotech and the Tower Bioinformatics Research Center at University of Haifa, Israel. My name is Ilya Brodsky. I am the CEO and co-founder of Pine Biotech. Together with myself, Julia Panoff, Dr. Vladimir Galatinka, and Stan Luban have contributed to the lectures and examples we will be using. I want to especially acknowledge the work of Dr. Leonid Brodsky, who is the director of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center. Thanks to his dedication, vision, and hard work, we were able to compile the necessary methods and datasets to make this course possible. You can learn more about his work and the tBioInfo platform by going to t-bio.info. The second person critical to this course is Dr. Sona Vasudevan, who had the vision to start the systems medicine program at the Georgetown University Medical Center. Her program was started in 2011 and is providing students with the opportunity to learn about the application of systems biology approaches and tools to biomedical problems. So let's begin by defining the purpose of this course. What do you think about when you hear machine learning? Well, many people will think of formulas, or maybe of code, maybe flowcharts of algorithms, or even benchmarking stats that compare machine learning methods between themselves. And while computer science, mathematics, and algorithms are definitely relevant to the study of machine learning, that will not be the focus of our course. In this course, we will only briefly touch on these technical aspects of machine learning and instead focus on the following. We will learn about key machine learning methods. We will learn and understand their applications, and especially to biomedical challenges. We will develop critical thinking about how to select and use these methods and in what situations. Learn to read and understand scientific literature, especially the kind that uses machine learning terminology in the methods section. Well, this will allow us to see through the hype that we often hear. In so many news articles, you can hear that machine learning will revolutionize biomedicine, or artificial intelligence will transform healthcare, or some people say that it will even take over the world. But that will not be the focus of our course. We will try to gain enough experience to be able to speak to others about machine learning with understanding. We will be able to explain the methods and understand what others say about them. Finally, and most importantly, we will gain experience by applying these methods to interesting projects. So, what is machine learning? Is it different, or how is it different from data mining, statistics, or computational biology? Is it the same as artificial intelligence? Does it have to do with data types, methods, or their application? Let's dive in and lay some foundation for what machine learning is and how it is used for high throughput biomedical data. Machine learning can be separated into two main categories of methods. Unsupervised machine learning that focuses on detection of patterns in data. The main idea is to apply techniques that are automated and rely on various assumptions about data to learn from it. The second main category is the supervised machine learning. These methods are relying on availability of training data, data that has already been labeled. Once a data set of labeled data is accumulated, it can be used to train a model that will be able to apply this knowledge, so to say, to analyze new data, for example, by predicting its class. With unsupervised machine learning methods, we start with a data set. Typically, it's going to be a table of elements, like these shapes. We can use a clustering method. 
for example, hierarchical clustering. A method that essentially seeks to identify groups based on similarity or dissimilarity, or we can use a dimensionality reduction method, for example, principal component analysis or PCA. And this method will use data variance to project the elements onto a hyperplane that we can visualize, and as a result will provide us with insight into our data and the different types or groups of elements that are present. In some cases, we can use the results to draw other conclusions about the data within such a structure. For example, in this case, we can see that the groups are based on shapes of elements within the group. Supervised machine learning takes in data that has to be labeled. Typically, this is done by people. In biomedical projects, this could be clinical data or some other phenotypic data. The label data is used to train a model. The methods vary, as do the principles used to build the model. For example, linear discriminant analysis will attempt to draw a separation line between the centers of classes in the training data. But whatever the method, it will essentially learn from the differences between various classes that are present in the training data set. Once the learning is established, you have a model or a template that can be applied to new data sets. New data can be assigned with a class that is present in the training data set. So, if something doesn't fit the model, like the star, model accuracy will be reduced. How are these methods used? for biomedical data. I mean, you probably know how machine learning can be used to match audiences with interesting social media posts, or how it is used to predict stock market financial data. But how is it applied for biomedical data? For clinical purposes, especially in clinical research, disease mechanisms, treatment selection, and development, as well as predictive models can be very helpful. In our course, we will use machine learning methods for patient stratification, disease classification and diagnostics, as well as predicting response, or the lack thereof, to treatment, and trying to understand the mechanisms of disease onset and progression. Importantly, the same methods could be applied to challenges of interest to the pharmaceutical industry, so we will address those as well during our sessions. I hope you are as excited as I am to start this course. In our next lecture, we will talk about the types of data that we will use. After all, machine learning has been around for quite some time, and arguably, many of the methods are statistical methods. So what has really changed? Why is it that only now we are using machine learning and talking about artificial intelligence and biomedicine? A little history and examples will help us understand how the challenges have changed and new opportunities emerged from new data technologies, advanced computational resources that are widely available, and improvements in machine learning methods as well as their combinations.